Hi, I'm Chris White, Director of Programming and Production at American Documentary POV. I'm here today with filmmakers Landon Van Soost and Jeremy Levine, who are the filmmakers behind Good Fortune, which is airing on POV in the summer of 2010. Jeremy and Landon, thank you for being here. So tell us what Good Fortune is about for people who haven't seen the film or who haven't heard about it. Good Fortune is a film about foreign aid, and it's about the way that despite our best intentions, a lot of our efforts to impact and address extreme poverty can have negative consequences. Um, the film follows two characters in Kenya, a farmer and a midwife, who are both the intended beneficiaries of massive foreign aid projects. Uh, both have millions of dollars behind them. Um, but in each case, the characters are struggling to maintain their livelihoods, to keep their homes, and actually end up organizing their communities to combat the projects. And what, what are the two stories? The first story that we follow is in Kibera, uh, which is a, a massive slum just outside of Nairobi. And our character there is Silva, and she's a midwife, and she's been living in Kibera for about 15 years. Um, so the United Nations has partnered with the Kenyan government, um, and they're doing a, a large-scale slum upgrading project. Um, Silva is very skeptical of the project from the beginning because the Kenyan government has made a lot of promises like these in the past that unfortunately they didn't follow through on. Um, and a lot of people for the project need to be displaced. So the, the uh, administrators of the project are saying that Silva and everyone else in her community is going to be moved to temporary housing for a period of time and then be moved back. Um, so her great fear is that she'll be moved out of her community and never really be able to come back. The other project is in a rural area, and a billionaire American investor is building a commercial rice farm that he is saying is going to benefit the local community there by building infrastructure and creating employment. We came to the worst place in Africa, in many ways, as far as poverty goes, as far as levels of education, as far as levels of employment, and uh, we're seeing a dramatic change. It's turning it around. It's a transformation that's underway, and with you know, a lot of hard work and God's help, this thing is going to be a Garden of Eden sitting out here someday. He's building an 1,100 acre reservoir that's going to flood the grazing land and homes of over 500 families. Um, so Jackson is within this reservoir reserve and his home is going to be flooded. Um, he's a teacher and a pastoralist, so his ability to graze his cattle and to farm is, is going to be taken away. I saw Bunny because they want to submit the whole, the, the whole of this area with water. We are against the Americans, seriously. Because they are dealing with us like animals, not human beings. I think one of the, the great things about both of the, the people we follow in the film is that they're really strong characters. They're really kind of pillars of their communities. and. Um, I, I think that comes across in the film and, and makes their stories emblematic of their communities. And, and how did you come to make this project? How did the two of you get involved in, in documenting these stories? Um, I had the opportunity in college to travel quite a bit through the developing world. And I think like most Westerners, I was really shocked by the images of extreme poverty that I saw. And I was really inspired to learn more about what I could do to be part of the solution. Um, so I went back to Kenya on an academic program to learn about international development and public health. And when I did that, I had the opportunity to really go to the ground and to meet a lot of the people who were supposed to be benefiting from international aid. Um, and I was really shocked to find out that, one, they felt very disenfranchised. They didn't feel like they were a part of the conversation. And two, that in many cases, you know, they were actually making their lives worse. Um, they were losing their homes, they were losing their livelihoods, and they weren't able to pursue their lives in the way that, that they saw fit. What's the disconnect, I mean, in, in, in these situations where there's so much money flowing in to <coughs> fix a problem and yet there are people who remain marginalized. Well, what's, what's, what's the disconnect here? There's really positive examples and really effective examples of aid, and those are the ones that come up from the bottom. The two stories we follow in the film are uh, from the top and are imposed on the communities, and I think that's where a lot of the trouble comes in. We have two examples that in some aspects are very different from each other. One is a chari charitable, like, kind of liberal idea of aid. One is a conservative, trickle-down economics um, view of aid. And both have very similar consequences. And again, I think the reason for that is that it's imposed on the communities. And in that way, they're really very similar. There's a, a huge sense of paternalism in the way that we deal with the rest of the world, the way that we as Western citizens um, deal with especially people in the developing world, that we feel like we know what's best for them. It, it, I, I find it really interesting that 
the, that the Yellow Swamp, where Jackson lives, is labeled one of the poorest areas in the country, where, you know, on paper, there's really not a lot of wealth in that area, but Jackson, for example, leaves, leads a really idyllic life. He has a, a big herd of cattle, which is kind of the currency of the, the area, and he's a school teacher, and he, you know, leads a, a, a good life. He doesn't work for somebody else, and I think that's what he wants, and so it's important I think not only to look at wealth on paper, but you know, quality of life and what, you know, if you actually win and talk to the community, do they need, do they need monetary wealth? Is that what they want? And, you know, I think what they're looking for in terms of, of aid and help would be very different. I'm not poor. This satellite hearing all these things and what would make poor. Now he won't make me poor. But as for now, I'm not poor. Our perceptions and our, our preconceived notions that we come into are, are something that we really need to break down. And we need to make every effort that we can to see people in Africa and people all over the world according to their own values. What do you want people to come away with after watching your film? This film is about good intentions and good intentions going wrong. And I think you know, good intentions are the first step, and then we need to see what is working, what's not, how can we do better, how can we make sure that all of this aid, all of this development is actually having the impact that we want. So it's not to walk away, that would be a tragedy. What we want people to come away from with this film is that we need to, we need to do better. We need to work with the communities. We can't impose our own ideas about what's going to work, but we need to work with the communities and implement small changes that are going to have profound impacts on, on these communities. I really hope that the film will be a catalyst for a, a discourse on international aid. I think the amount of money and the, all of the goodwill from Western citizens um, to, to bring foreign aid to Africa and to help combat extreme poverty is, um, is fantastic, and there's a tremendous amount of potential there. Unfortunately, I don't feel like our resources are having the impact that they could be. Um, I think that there are much better solutions, um, the sort of grassroots local initiatives um, that we could be supporting that would really help you know, fundamentally change the lives of people in a much more productive way. In terms of the people who are, who are watching your film and are impacted by your film and have, have the, the same goodwill that you're talking about, yet they're not going to go to Kenya and they're not going to go work for the <coughs> UN. What, what are the things that they can do to, to I guess, inform themselves to actually make a, a more productive difference? For people who, who see the film and want to get involved, uh, you know, I'd really recommend finding organizations that work with the grassroots. Uh, microfinance organizations do a lot of great work, and we'll have a lot of these resources on the POV website where you can see where you can get involved in a productive manner. I find that a lot of the really successful ones are the ones that are tackling one specific issue. You know, we're going to get bed nets to these people. We're going to provide school supplies to this community. And they, the ones that are working very closely with, with communities seem to have the most impact. Thank you very much for talking with me. Uh, we're thrilled to have good fortune on POV in the summer of 2010. Thank you, Landon. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you. you very much.